Hoy en la noche del Lobo Cine os traigo El fantasma de Chinatown, una película del año 1940 dirigida por Phil Rosen y distribuida por Monogram Pictures. El reparto de esta película consta de Lotus Long, Andre Gordon, Charles Miller, Grant Withers o Cage Luke el famoso maestro de Lee Chuan Kane en la serie Kung Fu, que ya en los años 40 era un actor de renombre y que hizo innumerables películas, llegando a interpretar a Cato en la versión de los años 40 de la Bisbomber. Durante una conferencia sobre la última expedición al desierto de Mongolia, el doctor John Benton muere tras ingerir agua envenenada. Sus últimas palabras, fuego eterno. Son la única pista para el detective chino Wong y el capitán de policía Street. Win Len, la secretaria de Benton, les revela que estas palabras se refieren a un pergamino que Benton descubrió durante su viaje, el cual señala la ubicación de valiosos pozos petrolíferos. A partir de este punto, el detective y el capitán inician la búsqueda del asesino entre los allegados al Dr. Benton. La película tiene una duración de 62 minutos aproximadamente y es en versión original subtitulada al español, debiendo activar estos en la esquina inferior derecha para poder verlos. Sin más, os dejo con el fantasma de China. Word of our needs has preceded us, and soon the camel train was arriving at our base camp. Our days were filled with protests of the patient beasts who seemed to sense the dangerous journey before them. At this time, may I express my appreciation to the one man whose patience, sympathy, and understanding more than anyone else made our expedition possible. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Norman Wilkes, the president of Southern University. The camel is, like most patient souls, more than a little stubborn, and the packing developed into an endurance contest between the beasts and the attendants. It's too bad this young man wasn't a few years older. I'm sure he could have solved the entire problem. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha. 
Now, as you lie with these people, ladies and gentlemen, bear in mind that at one time in history, and again just calm, they ruled the world. And that reminds me of another unsung hero, a man whose industry and devotion were responsible for the photographic records of our journey. Charlie Frazier, our cameraman. Uh, but at last, even the camels were subdued, and we started on our trek. A journey that is to uncover the tomb of an emperor and bring to light one of Earth's great secrets. Followed days of monotonous sameness as we plodded onward into the desert. Broken only by occasional visits of our plane, which faithfully flew along our route, delivering mail, needed supplies, and bringing back our sick and injured. We have a signal arranged to tell them when we want it. You must realize that this is more than a travelogue. We have all the elements of drama, promised reward, obstacles to overcome, even a suggestion of romance, which explains the frequent trips of our airplane. My daughter Louise is with the uh, caravan, and Tommy Dean was piloting the plane. Our objective was a hitherto undiscovered country across the mountains. As we started to climb, the temperature dropped precipitately until we were in the snow country. As you can see by the way the camels are floundering, this is not the easiest part of our journey. But at last the summit was reached, and we began to descend toward our objectives. I promised you all an interesting surprise. Here it is, the discovery of the Emperor's tomb, whose whereabouts had remained a mystery for centuries. The shock of discovery was too much for sudden realization after the hardships of our journey. But gradually, the enormity of our find possessed us. We called to each other in our excitement and rushed into the tomb. Back out of the way, boys. Back out of the way. Here it is. We found it. The tomb. Oh, my camera. I ought to be photographing this. Oh, my fault, sir. Did you find anything? Yes, yes, the sarcophagus in there. Louise, tell me. Frazier. What is it, Father? I found it, the sarcophagus. It's in oh. here. In here, come on. I'm sorry. Oh, well, let me alone. Our Chinese bearers had warned us of the curse on the two. I can't say as to that. I only know that our troubles began from that moment. A violent windstorm descended upon us, 
threatening our camp. We all worked hard to combat the elements, buoyed by the success of our expedition. Mason, our co-pilot, seemed very much moved. He started out to revisit the tomb, but he must have got lost in the treacherous storm, but by morning, he had not returned. The wind increased in violence. The searching party returned, without Mason. I would like to take this opportunity to pay tribute to Mason, this gallant member of our party who did so much to help achieve our success. My Chinese barrows became fear-stricken as the storm grew worse. I was faced with a horrible decision. To wait and endanger the lives of our whole party or press on. I decided on the latter course. only when I began the difficult task of translating the scroll that I really found out the magnitude of our discovery. <coughs> the more I studied its contents, the more I realized that I... that I... What's wrong, Louise? I don't know, Jimmy. Something's happened to Father. see what there was of the lecture, Jimmy. Father will be disappointed. My only excuse is that I misunderstood the time. Perhaps we can run the pictures again. I hope so. Jimmy was one of Dad's favorite pupils. I never could get much interested in archaeology. If you can fly a plane. And after all, there are many reasons for wanting to go on an archaeological trip to China. Here's the complete camera report. I've arranged to store the film and... Are you listening to me? Yes, yes, of course. Thank you. Oh, I wish they'd hurry. The doctor's been up there a long time. No, don't worry. Your dad's been under a strain. The work and study preparing for the lecture's been too much for him. Miss Louise? Yes, Jonas? Yeah, I want them upstairs. Of course. Excuse me. Way, sir. See if nobody leaves here, Grady. What's all the excitement about? I don't know, but it must be serious. That was Captain Street of the Homicide Squad. Homicide? Yes. That means a Dr. Benton? I'm afraid so. Oh. You can't keep murder out of the newspapers. We have no proof that he was murdered. Your own doctor says he was poisoned. You tell me he was stricken during a lecture. Doesn't look like suicide to me. What I want to know is who had the brilliant idea of removing the body. I did. It wasn't the body. It was my very dear friend, Dr. Benton. We all supposed that he'd collapsed from overwork. It would have been inhuman to have left him on the floor. Yeah, but it might have helped me a little. I'm supposed to photograph a body at the scene of the crime. I got work to do, prints, clues, routine to go through. Perhaps this wasn't a routine crime. Who are you? My name is Wong, James Lee Wong. How do you fit into this? Dr. Benton had just returned from the interior of China. I'm Chinese. Are you Chinese too? Yes, sir. 
Two of you work together? I never, I never saw, saw her before, until no. an hour ago. You sent for me, sir? Oh, yeah. What did Dr. Benton have for lunch? Uh, des hors d'oeuvre, filet meunier, des pommes de terre julienne, des petits pois et du café. That's fine. Everybody else have the same thing? Everybody, uh, except Miss Winland. What'd she have, chop suey? No, sir. She had a cup of coffee and a piece of apple pie. She has had the same lunch every day for a month. You mean she eats here all the time? She lives here. Winland is, uh, or I should say was, uh, Dr. Benton's secretary. Oh. All right, all right, all right. What do the rest of you do? I was airplane pilot on the expedition. And I was the cameraman. I ran the projection machine at the lecture. What's your racket? Research. Who else was with him at the lecture? The doctor's daughter, whom he met upstairs, the trustees of the university, and a few friends. Who was with him when he died? Jonas and I. Did he say anything? Research. Oh, uh, as a matter of fact, he did. Uh, of course, I didn't mention it before because it didn't make sense. Well, come on, what'd he say? Well, uh, we could hardly hear him. It was something about uh, eternal fire and that Winland will... What do you know about this? Why, nothing at all. I have no idea what the doctor meant. When Dr. Benton phoned me, he hinted at something important he had found. There was the scroll. Did you help him translate it? No, Dr. Benton wouldn't let anyone see it. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Scroll, eternal fire, translate. What is all this? Well, the doctor was telling us about finding an ancient scroll in the tomb of the Ming Emperor. Where is it now? In the safe. Who has the combination? Dr. Benton and Dr. Wilkes. Of course. Uh, being president of the college, I have the combinations of every safe on the campus. Well, come on, come on, let's open it. All right. Why, there's nothing in there. The scroll's gone. Yeah, yeah, and so's my patience. Now, listen. I'm sick of scrolls, translations, eternal fires. I'm going to have just a slight dash of murder mystery. Police headquarters. Homicide. Hello, this is Street speaking. I want you to send some men up to room number four, lecture room number four at the Southern University. That's right, Doc Benton's place. Yeah. You know, prints, photographs, the works. Yeah. Chinese exchange, please. Chinese exchange. Wo Long Tan. Wo Long Tan. Yes. Torino. Yeah. That was Jonas. He says there's a Chinese name Wong sticking his nose in. Jonas must have been scared. The house is full of cops and he takes a chance on phoning us. Well, I only hope our Jonas doesn't turn out to be our Jonah. Yeah. Certain people would give a lot to know that you didn't die in that Chinese desert. Wong, eh? I wonder who he's working for. Well, you figure that out. Good evening, fool. Late again, huh? You late. Me no late. You always late. Fix breakfast, no breakfast. Fix lunch, you no lunch. How you expect find killer? You no can find whom. How you know I look all the semi killer? You go Dr. Banton. Dr. Banton die. I lit the paper. Nice going. Maybe I ought to let you hunt killer while I stay home and cook. You cook? <laughs> Fooey. My name not Fooey. Name Foo. <laughs> well, it may be Foo in China, but in America, it's Fooey. Huh. How Dr. Banton kill? Poison. What kind poison? Nobody knows until the police surgeon performs an autopsy. Sure. Maybe Dr. Banton had bad cook. What's the matter? You play games? No, there's something wrong with these pictures. There's nothing wrong with soup. You eat them. 
That's it. I've got it. You've got what? I've got what's wrong with the pictures. The water picture. Look. See this picture? Dr. Benton as he started the lecture? See the water picture on the table? See this picture of the lecture room after Dr. Benton's collapse? Where's the water picture? <laughs> Not this one. We have a time to fire here. You found a blingium. Why didn't I think of that before? Everybody crazy. thousand fingerprints, 25 suspects, Chinese temples, a missing scroll, an eternal fire. What a case. Hello. Yeah, Doc. Yeah, okay, thanks. And now some kind of an alkaloidal poison nobody knows anything about. Hey, Grady, come here. What do you think that is? Maybe it's the eternal fire. Can't you two find any other place to neck? He's hurt. Hurt? I'll say he is. Out like a red lantern. Wong, Wong, snap out of it, old boy. What happened? Oh, I was searching the grounds and something hit me. You see who hit you? No. What were you looking for? This. I don't know how you're mixed up in all of this, but maybe you got something. You figure the poison was in the drinking water all the time, right? Right. And in the excitement following Dr. Benton's collapse, the murderer threw the water pitcher and glass out the window. The window was open during the lecture. How do you know? I opened it. Dr. Benton asked me to. Whoever hit you on the head was probably looking for pieces of this, huh? Yes. He probably found the pitcher. Being heavy, it didn't break. Luckily, I held that piece of the glass in my hand. Luckily for you, it didn't cut your hand off. Yeah. You sure you didn't hear or see anyone? Not exactly. I did see what appeared to be a flashlight in a shrubbery. Now it's your turn. I, too, saw light in the shrubbery. I hurried over and found Mr. Wong lying on the ground. I was doing my best to revive him when you arrived. Sure you didn't hit him on the head in the first place? Positive. But I did hear someone running away. Oh. A mysterious character shrouded in darkness. What were you doing snooping around the ground? I wasn't snooping. I was on my way here. You asked me to come. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right, I did. In the habit of carrying a flashlight? Why, no. No, of course not. It's too simply simple. How do we even know that's the glass Doc Benton drank out of? We don't, but a simple laboratory Yeah, test. yeah, yeah, I know all about that. All right, you two, run along. Thank you, Captain. Coming? Grady, take that down to the laboratory and have it tested for poison. Yeah. Where will you be? I'll check with you later at the station. Beat it. Yes, sir. Can I take you somewhere? No, thanks. I'm due at Dr. Benton's. Well, that's good. You'll have no trouble reaching there. However, if you're not going to Dr. Benton's, be careful. You're going to be followed. Are you sure I'm going to be followed? We're going to be followed. Is that better? Much.
you like talking? Of course. What shall we talk about? Scrolls. Ancient ones from Chinese temples. What was on it? I don't know. Usually these scrolls are merely a detailed survey of all the Emperor's possessions. Dr. Benton hinted of something important. Did he tell you what it was? No. He said the lecture was the time and place to reveal it. Then his discovery may have been the reason for the murder and the theft. I don't know. Merely as a museum piece, the scroll was very valuable. Granted. But why couldn't it have indicated the location of some hidden treasure? Mr. Wong, I believe you've been reading too many detective stories. It's following all right. I've got to get away. Will you help me? That depends. I'm not running out, but there's something I must do. I can't explain. You've got to trust me. Hang on. Where's the girl? The girl? Yeah, you know. You left the lecture hall with her. Gwen Lynn. Why, Captain, have you been following me? Now cut out the clown, and where is she? She must have disappeared. All right, wise guy. I got the number of that cab, and I'm going to have her picked up. Police headquarters. Give me homicide. This is Street speaking. Send out an order to have a taxi cab picked up. Number 5U7511. Yeah, that Chinese girl got away. Win Lim. I want her picked up. Who? Put him on. Hello, Grady. Yeah? Yeah? Well, thanks. Okay. Say, listen. Hold the phone a minute. Now get this. I'm with this Wong fella. His address is on Grant Avenue. I want you to check it. Send a good man up there to go over his place with a fine tooth comb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll keep him busy for an hour. Okay. Well, you were right. He found poison on that glass. Corresponds with the poison in Doc Bennett's stomach. Sure must have been potent. Probably an oriental vegetable poison. When Lennon know about that, wouldn't she? Yes. Or any of the other members of the expedition. They were all in China. Yeah, yeah. You better take a little ride with me. Are you taking me in? Why? What have you been doing? Nothing that you don't know about. No. No, as a matter of fact, I want a little help. I'll have one of my boys pick your car. Come on. How much? Two dollars even, sir. Thank you very much. You know, I'm pretty much of a down-to-earth cop. Chinese temples, and eternal fires, and manuscripts, a little out of my line. But you're Chinese. What do you think of it? My countrymen dress ordinary things in fanciful language. Eternal fire may be something down-to-earth. Well, maybe. Let's see, there's Wen Lin, and then there's Louise Benton, although I don't think she poisoned her own father. Then there's that Tommy, what's his name, the aviator, and Frazier, the cameraman. I think you and I better get a complete list of that expedition, don't you? It would help. Also a list of the people at the lecture. 
Whoever poisoned the water was at the lecture. He couldn't very well take a chance on that water being tasted by someone else. He or she, you mean. I'm not forgetting Win Lim. Whoever did it sneaked up there in the dark during the lecture and put the poison in the water. Possibly. Though you'd think Win Lin would have seen that. She was facing away from the screen. It's more likely it's that... It's more likely that Win Lin fixed the whole thing. Except for one thing. What's that? Well, in all the murder mysteries I've read and seen, the person they throw all the suspicion on is never the murderer. <laughs> Maybe this is one time they'll cross up the formula. Oh, that's too much to hope for. By the way, uh, where's the film that they ran this afternoon? Uh, Frazier, that cameraman has it. Why? Everybody has one advantage on us. They've heard the lecture and seen the pictures. Why don't we take a look? If nothing else happens, at least we'll be even with the rest of them. Well, that's a good idea. I got an hour to spare. Might as well spend it at the movies. <laughs> Hello. Yes, speaking. Where? The Green Dragon. Well, who is this? Hello. Hello. Doesn't look like anybody's home. No. I got a phone call asking me to meet Win Lin at the Green Dragon. I, I started out, got suspicious, turned around, came home, and the roof fell in on me. Was it Win Lin on the phone? I thought it was. Have a drink? No, thanks. Didn't you see anyone when you came in? No, it was dark. Somebody's searching the place. They must have heard us coming. Got any idea what they were looking for? No, there's nothing worth taking except... Well, thanks to you fellas, they didn't have time to do much damage in here. Where's the film of the expedition? Oh, I have it right here on this machine. I've been working on it. Well, that's what we came to see. 
And my projection machine is still at the university. However, I can run it through this movie over for you. We use this for cutting. Stop and start as you please. That's fine, if you don't mind. Oh, not at all. You cut this film yourself? Oh, sure. It's a one-man job. You photographed the interior of the tomb? Why, yes. There it is. Where's the scene of Dr. Benson finding a scroll? Well, I never got that. In fact, I didn't know anything about the scroll until today at the lecture. We were all kind of excited, and when Dr. Benton yelled that he had found the sarcophagus, why, I left the camera and ran with the others. And you and the others didn't see anything. Ah, so you gave me the duck, put in a phony call to Frazier, and then broke into his house. That isn't true. I never telephoned. Then what are you doing here? I called for some enlargements that Dr. Wilkes wanted. When I arrived, the door was open. There was someone sitting at the desk. As I came in, he turned around with a gun in his hand. Yeah. Tied you up and put you in the closet. Why don't you tell us what happened? You were searching the place, Fraser caught you, and you conked him. Then tied herself up and put herself in the closet? Well, Fraser didn't tie her up and put her in the closet and then knock himself out, did you? Where is he? Hey, Fraser! Oh. What are you doing here? I thought I heard somebody outside. Yeah, I know. The mysterious stranger again, eh? <coughs> Police headquarters. Homicide. Hello, this is Street speaking. Send a crew up to Fraser's house. Photographs, fingerprints, footprints, too. There may be a mysterious stranger at that. That's all. Come on. There was somebody. Listen. got the license number, but it's probably a stolen car. Yeah, we better get out of here before somebody calls a cop. Well, it looks like we got the murderer right where he wants us. Haven't accomplished much, have we? No, we sure haven't. We were doing all right till Win Lynn gave you the slip. <laughs> you kind of put one over on you, didn't she? Yeah, looks like it. Yeah, it's quite a story she told. I wonder what her angle is. I don't know, but come on up to my apartment and I'll try to find out. Oh, it's too late to find out anything tonight. Come on up anyway. I'll make you a cup of tea. What have I got to lose? What's the matter, fool? Wait a minute. Calm down. Speak English. This is Captain Street. Excuse me. Man looks see house. I catch him. 
What does he look like? Big man, big feet. Where is he now? He show you. See? Get out of here, you muttonhead. Get out! One of your men, Captain? Not as of tomorrow. Oh, I see. Good work. Now make us some tea, fool. Come on, Captain. Sorry about having to send that man up here, Jimmy, but you've been so close now. Hey, what is your angle on this case, anyway? A group of influential Chinese think the secret of eternal fire is vital to the defense of China. You mean that this eternal fire is really on the level? Decidedly. Excuse me. Chinatown Exchange, please. Uh, this is James Lee Wong, revered elder, please. Greeting. Only the eyebrows of youth would have the temerity to call the beard of age at such an hour. How great a blessing is clear perception. Welcome, James Lee. The eternal fire is safe? Not until Dr. Benton's murder is solved. A daughter of the Moonflower named Win Lin is concerned. Is she known to the friends of China? You have added to my already heavy load of obligation. The eyes of the blind need no ointment. The sight of the temple is in the hands of China's enemies. It is your duty to see that the secret of eternal fire is not used against her. Health, happiness, and enduring spring. Sons to mourn at your grave. Look, I got troubles enough without having to worry about figuring out Chinese proverbs. What about Wimlin? Now, Captain, just relax. We're going to have a little tea. And then, if you'll pick me up in the morning, I think we can get Win Lin to talk. Well, why wait till morning? She won't be going anywhere. All right, all right, bring on the tea. What's all this? The sarcophagus from the Chinese tomb, sir, that once contained the body of a Ming emperor. They tell me that a Chinese archaeological expedition is digging up the body of George Washington in exchange. Sir? Well, it gives you a rough idea. Is Winlen home? In the library. Good morning. Hello, Jimmy. Tommy and I were just leaving. Any news? Nothing definite. Uh, you met Captain Street? Yes, hello, Captain. How do you do? You remember Tommy Dean? Yeah, how are you, Dean? We haven't wanted to bother you, Miss Benton, but have you thought of anything that might help us? No. No, I've racked my brain, gone over and over the whole expedition. How about you, Dean? Uh, this uh, co-pilot, Mason, for instance, uh, can you tell us anything about him? Well, he was a peculiar sort of a duck. However, Frazier might be able to help you. He was a very good friend of Mason's. Well, if either of you think of anything, let us know. We will. You gentlemen are out early this morning. Yeah, never mind that. Let's get down to business. Have you a few moments? Of course. There are a few things I'd like to discuss with you. But I've already told you everything I know. As Dr. Benson's secretary, perhaps, but uh, we hope you talk in your official capacity. Hey, wait a minute. Remember me? Win Lin works for the Chinese government. What? Is that true? Yes. You'd better tell us all you know. I'm sure your country, as well as mine, must want the scroll recovered. Naturally, my sympathies follow my heritage, but after all, I am an American. The secret must not be used against either country. What is this, a spy plot? Could very easily be. The scroll contained a clue to the Temple of Eternal Fire. There was a shrine where, according to Chinese legend, there burned an undying column of fire. For centuries, its location was never known. But one thing was clear from all the stories. Oil replenished the flame, oil seeping through the Earth's surface. There was no doubt that if this shrine really existed, it must be the largest oil deposit in the world. Why, if that's true, that scroll is worth a fortune. That's why my government assigned me to Dr. Benton. But I failed. The thief was too clever for me. Of course, it's too late to prevent uh, Dr. Benton's death. But working together, we still may retrieve the scroll and save other lives. I'll do all that I can to help. Well, if that's true, what about that hopeless pocus at Frazier's last night? I don't know. Honestly, I didn't telephone him. Well, who did? Frazier said the call was in Chinese. 
Probably from Chinatown. Wait a minute. If it was, it can be traced. The Chinatown Exchange lists subscribers by name. After all, all we have to do is find the operator who called Fraser's house. Yes, it's all very simple. Well, come on, let's get busy. That's all, May. Thank you. We handle many phone calls each night, but since we know the approximate time, it is possible that one of the girls will remember. Rose Fettel, you were on duty last night. From 8 until 12. This is Mr. Wong. Hello, Jimmy. Jimmy's brother and I went to high school together. Then perhaps we'd better let Mr. Wong explain what we want. Rose, this is Wynn Lin, and this gentleman is Captain Street of the San Francisco Police. We are trying to trace a call to a Mr. Fraser, who lives at the old Cavern of Peace. You know the place? Yes, it is at the upper left-hand corner of my board. Rose means that the phone plugs in there on the board as she sits facing it. Good. Uh, do you remember plugging in a call for there at approximately 8 o'clock last night? We better let Rose face the board. She might remember. Fine. Yes, there was a call for Mr. Fraser. Where did it come from? I'm sorry, I can't locate it exactly for you. The best I can do is be sure it came from this section. Oh, that's fine, Rose. At least you've narrowed it down. Thank you so much. Uh, you can furnish us a list of the subscribers whose names are in this area? Of course. That's a waterfront. Sure. Then all we got to do is check them all and find out which one called Frazier last night. There are only 12 names. Hmm, 12 names. And three of them are female subscribers. Suppose we leave them to Win Lin. You and I can track down the others. Oh, this is crazy. Just because your friend Rose Petal has a brainwave, we have to check up on every Chinese laundry in town. The next one's a chop suey parlor. Maybe you'll feel better after a little lunch. I'll wait for Joe's Steakhouse. Here we are. Charlie One. Welcome, please. You like chop suey? No, nah, just looking around. Chow mein? Hit for you? No? No, thanks. You here alone? Yes, please. Alone. Very hard on one man. A wise man understands the seven virtues of peace. What is one more stone to an overloaded donkey? Come on, there's no harm in this man. Donkey. May I use your phone? Sorry, no phone. What? No I phone. I happen to know there's a phone in here. Where is it? Show it to me. Chop, chop. No phone, no wait phone. Wait a minute, wait a minute. See that? It's pretty, isn't it? That's me. I'm the law. If you don't tell me where that phone is, you're going to get in plenty of trouble. Let me talk to him. What do you get in there? Wait a minute. What is all this? I saw him press that button and trace the wire to that closet. It looks suspicious. Yeah. Where's the phone? Please, no phone. Charlie want no trouble. You're going to get in plenty of trouble. Come on. See the flyer? Yeah. My best clothes. Oh, shut up. Looks like a panel. Yeah, how do you open it, Charlie? I don't know. Go on, blast it, Jimmy. Wait a minute, Jimmy. After you, Charlie. No. Get in there. You set up. There goes our killer. Did you see that knife? Charlie won. Hey, you! Going someplace, Charlie? Was one a good unit, look one. Fun to go in. Hmm. Nice work, Jimmy. I was uh, held up. Come on, you and me's going to have a little talk. Come on. Never mind the double. Well, your friend Charlie One finally talked. Hey, where'd you put that note you sent to him? A little Chinese threat about the bones of his ancestors. 
Sure worked. He didn't even want me to leave. I want to see you, too. Oh, let him wait a while. What did he have to say? Who were the two men? Said he didn't know their names, only knew them as number one and number four. I showed him every picture in the place, but he didn't recognize any of them. Too bad. Yeah. You know, it's a funny thing. But this knife looks exactly like the one they threw at you the other night. Well, doesn't it? Yes. Might be the same knife. I beg your pardon, what is that thing? A little trinket you men found when they searched the hideout. You mind laying it down long enough to listen to me? Oh, of course not. I didn't mean to be rude. It's an interesting piece, and I was trying to trace it. I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right. Only Charlie dropped a bombshell. And I wanted to watch your face when they sprang it on you. I'm all face and ears. Well, he claims he didn't know the two men in the hideout. But he did describe a frequent visitor. Who was it? Jonas. Jonas? The Benton Butler? That's right. <whistles> Let's get going. Oh, good evening. Good evening. Where's Jonas? I don't know. Come to think of it, I haven't seen him for several hours. He's probably in his room reading. He spends a lot of time there. We'll go over the house. I want to check his room. Have any success this afternoon? Yes, that's why we want Jonas. Ever see anything like that before? Why, that's Sun Yat, the god of vengeance. I haven't seen him since you were in China. Where did you get him? In a room that... How long since you've seen Jonas? He was here at lunch. All right, did you find him? No, sir, no sign of him. Oh, so he scrammed, eh? Okay, send out a description on the radio and have him picked up. That settles it. You mean that Jonas killed Dr. Benton? Sure, but he won't get far away. Jonas, I can't believe it. Look! Jonas! <laughs> Not a fingerprint or anything. I still can't understand how they stuffed them in there without you knowing about it. I'm sorry, Captain, but my duties take me all over the house. Besides, I was working on those phone subscribers until dinner time. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm just making noises. This case has got me daffy. Daggers, fingerprints, scrolls, poison. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, Doc. What? You don't say. All right, you do say then. Okay, thanks. How do you like that? This was stuck in Jonas after he died. Then what killed him? The same poison that killed Doc Benton. Well, we're getting no place fast. Well, what do you say, Mastermind? I'm going crazy and you're playing with a doll. I guess we're both going crazy. Uh, we were talking about this uh, god of vengeance, you called it? Yes, he's a local deity found among the nomad tribes of the Gobi Desert. In the same district as the Emperor's tomb? Yes, as far as I know, that's the only place. Now, wait a minute, children. I don't want to hear any more about Oriental Hocus Pocus. All I want to know is who killed Doc Benton and who killed Jonas. I think maybe we're getting warm. Uh, any report on the two men in the motorboat? No, the Harbor Patrol hasn't turned up a thing. Are you desperate? Am I desperate? You're looking at a man that's got five newspapers, a police commissioner, and the whole town around his neck. And he asked me, am I desperate? I mean desperate enough to try a long shot. Sure, I'll try anything. What is it? Get me the Tribune. Uh, Mr. Miles, uh, Jimmy Wong calling. Following the startling announcement that Mason, the missing pilot of the Benton expedition, had been found and a diagnosis of his condition, it was announced that he has been taken to St. Christopher's Hospital and is shortly expected to regain consciousness. The police confidently expect that as soon as he does so, they will obtain valuable information in the Benton murder investigation. All right, run this wire through the window and connect it up. If I'm right, the killer will try to prevent Mason from talking. And for tonight, I'm going to be Mason. But, Jimmy, how can you be sure that Mason's alive? I can't. 
But I'm banking on the killer not being sure either. Then Mason might even be the killer. That's right. But, Jimmy... Oh, there's nothing to worry about. All we're trying to do is get these people out in the open. This microphone will pick up the slightest noise. You and Grady and I'll be listening in, and if any trouble starts, we'll know it as soon as Jimmy. Now, come on, let's let him get to bed. Promise to yell if anything happens. I promise. Then good luck. Oh, snap out of it. Nothing's gonna happen. The grounds are knee-deep in cops. Nice detail, eh? Yeah, Street must be off his nut, us patrolling a joint like this. <laughs> sure, I never seen one of these stakeouts work yet. Yeah. Everything okay? Yeah, listen. This is station W-O-N-G, signing off. We'll be back later with some interesting disclosures, I hope. <laughs> That's good. Keep it tuned there. Hey, Grady. Yeah, yeah, come on, come on, stay awake. What time is it? Yeah, it's 2.30. You heard anything? No, no, not a peep. Men trains keep the same hours as cops do, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> Drop it. Come on, reach. There's something I think will interest you. So, Fraser, it was you who threw the knife at me. Sure, we were watching from the garden. It's awfully nice of you to arrange this little party, Mr. Wong. But perhaps I'd better introduce myself. I'm Mason, whom you so rashly decided to impersonate. I was hoping you'd turn up, particularly after we found the God of Vengeance in your hideout back of Charlie One. And then you can see this gives me a chance to satisfy the little fellow. You and Fraser were partners, huh? That's right. Mr. Fraser decided to double-cross me. He tried to kill me and left me for dead in the desert. Fortunately, a wandering tribe picked me up and nursed me back to health. That's where you got the God of Vengeance. That's why you broke into Fraser's house and searched for the scroll. You knew he had it. It's a lie. Oh, no, it isn't, Fraser. And we're going to take you someplace where we can make you talk. 
I'd have finished it that night, but you interrupted me. Since then, he's been in hiding, but uh, I thought this little trick of yours would smoke him out. I'm afraid you're going to have a little trouble getting away. I don't think so. Torino, though, is our intern. We have an ambulance waiting downstairs. Hey, Grady. Yeah? Haven't you heard anything on this thing? No, nothing. A few minutes ago, there was just a little click, and then there was all. A click? Yeah. Give me that headset. Take Fraser out. I'll keep Wong busy until you get started. Come on, Fraser, get moving. You can't bluff me. This is no bluff. Move. Why, it's dead. Something's happened to the wire. I mean, it's dead. I went and fixed the thing. It was all ready when we found it. Nice work, Jimmy. Well, Fraser, you'd better talk now. As soon as I saw the film of the expedition, I felt sure that you had cut it and that the camera had photographed more than you admitted. Yeah. The reason you killed Doc Benton is because you didn't want him to tell about the oil. What about Jonas? He knew that Fraser had stolen the scroll and was working with Mason to try to get it back. Fraser killed him, too. You are very clever, Mr. Wong, but you still haven't got the scroll, and what's more, you'll never get it. You see, I destroyed it. Oddly enough, I believe you, Fraser. But you didn't destroy it without photographing it. The scroll itself would have been difficult to dispose of. Besides, the contents are the most important thing. Search him, Captain. Come on. What am I looking for? Film. Well, that's probably it. What's that? That's too small. The picture's inside. Open it. May I? This is part of China. I think we can trust you to see that it remains so. What do you think, Captain? Well, I think you're right. Except that I think someone should go along to help. That is, someone who understands the language and, well, the customs. That is, somebody like yourself. It's a wise man who understands a nod. Well, come on, come on. 